Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. It's that time once again, y'all. All right, we back with another episode of the next show. And so, week 11 in the NFL is upon us. So that means it's time for Mr. Deli D's weekly NFL picks. Okay, so, um, you know, you guys know uh, the drill. Who's going to win and why I think so. Uh, we got some interesting matchups this week, actually. Some some good ones. And uh, the potential for maybe the New York Football Jets to get their first win of the year. OMG! Maybe possible, but probably not because Adam Gay is still the coach. So don't bet on it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, NFL Big Board is ready, and so am I. So uh, here we go, as they say. Okay, so um, the Thursday game. Oh, yeah, speaking of the Thursday game, since you know I don't do the Thursday games, but shout out to my boy Jakey. Uh, he must be, you know, nice and proud of his uh, Seattle Seahawks. A nice uh, bounce back game against the rival Cardinals, who uh, had their number earlier in the year. So uh, at home as well. So you know, good on him. They're top of the division now, as uh, you know, he and many other Seahawks fans probably think they should be. And uh, you know, you know, based based on the record and based on you know the talent and. And the play, the defense, you know, finally stepped up. Carlos Dunlap, you know, they they, they paid a price to trade him, to get him. And, uh, you know, he proved his worth there on, on the last uh, throwing attempt of Murray. So, yeah, good on them. They're 7-3 uh, and three now, and uh, let's see if they can just uh, keep it rolling here for the rest of the year. So, shout out to Jakey. There you go, Seahawks. They did it. All right, so on to the uh, Sunday and Monday game. So first one I'm looking at here, uh, the Bengals at the Washington football team. So, um, you know, they're, they're a couple of uh, lowly um, basement dwelling teams. I think uh, in this one, because Joe Burrow has been killing it uh, and the fact that, I don't know, really Washington has really nothing going for it. Yes, they're at home. Uh, and you know Alex Smith, you know might might lift them, lift their spirits, but it's not gonna be enough, man. Joe Burrow is like he's a walking 300 yard, three tub quarterback, so uh, he's gonna get his, uh, especially on the road where uh, I guess you know a lot of players will tell you that it's easier to focus on the road, uh, you know, as as a unit, as one team. Uh, yeah, so take the Bengals. Don't wanna get on uh, too long-winded here with the picks. But uh, next one, Falcons at the Saints. Uh, no Drew Brees, which is very significant. Uh, and everyone just assumed that Jameis Winston was going to get the start. And then as it turns out, Taysom Hill was taking all the first-team offensive reps, and uh, he was named the starter for this weekend. He, he will start the first series. We know that much. Uh, but you know, how much does he play as just like a gadget guy? You know, he, a lot of people really don't think that he's got, he's got an arm, at least not like James Winston anyway, and just, you know, no experience at, uh, at starting at quarterback. So, um, I, it's the Falcons though, man, like this is a rivalry game and it's in New Orleans. Like it still means a lot to them, even though they won't have, uh, you know, the, the captain, the undisputed leader of that team, Breeze. But honestly, man, I would still take the Saints at home. Money. All right, next matchup I see here. Uh, the 9-0 and Steelers versus the Jaguars. Am I seeing this right? Who are 1-8? and uh, Yeah, Steelers. Next, uh, the Patriots at the Texans. Okay, so the Texans are a pretty inept football team. They're only 2-7. and seven, um, And the Patriots look like they're starting to turn it around with Cam and you know, him actually executing the things that Belichick, you know, wants and needs for him to do. Uh, and as much as it pains me to say this, I'm going to take the Patriots over the Texans on the road. Uh, yeah, 
I, I don't think I don't think uh, you know Belichick wants to be humiliated any more than he already has. I think he's sick of it. He's sick of being asked you know the same questions over and over. And you know they've won two in a row, albeit you know they they barely squeak by my New York Football Jets. And then you know the the next week um, you know they got lucky as well with some 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 referee calls. Uh, all right, next game the Eagles at the Browns. Yeah, so the Eagles are pretty much straight garb. They couldn't even uh, pull one out against the Giants, for God's sake. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't bet on them anymore for anything, man. You know, just terrible. So for this one, definitely, with the Browns being at home, you know, Nick Chubb is back. They're just going to run the football down the Eagles' throats and then, you know, just let Baker play off of the play action from the run or even, like, uh, uh, design runs. For Baker, you know, who can get out in open space. So, yeah, man, like, this one might be a laugh for you. All straight up, Browns at home. Uh, next game, Lions at the Panthers. Um, you know, I took the Lions last week, and they came through, man. You know, they're, 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 they're a team on the rise right now, you know. They, they, they got a bit of heat on them. They got a bit of heat on them right now, you know. So, I mean, I realize that it's on the road, and, you know, the, the Panthers – they're gonna they're gonna want this game. I realize that, but I don't know. I just think, I just think the makeup of of the Lions and you know the, the Matt Patricia head coach, you know, I think he's gonna have them prepared. And I think there's just there's just not enough on the Panthers team, man, to, to deal with, you know, some of the weapons that the Lions have and and Stafford's arm. So I'm gonna take the Lions at home, man. You know, they hey yo hey hey they came through last week, yo. I gotta take them. I gotta take them. I, was, I I don't really see much out of the Panthers, yo, to, to take them over the Lions, even with even with them being on the road. I don't know, man. I gotta take I gotta take Lions, yo. I'm gonna do it. All right, next. Titans at Ravens. Oh man. Ooh. This is gonna be this is gonna be a, a marquee matchup. Marquee matchup. I think so far. You know, looking at looking at the table here, I mean, you know, this this has got to be the the marquee matchup of the weekend. Looking at some of the other games, you know, we'll talk about some of the other games, you know, uh, upcoming here uh, as we as we move along here through the schedule. But you know, so far I'm looking at this, and this is this is this is the heavyweight title fight right here of the weekend. Titans at Ravens. So let's just see if Lamar can actually win a meaningful game. They're at home, but man, Derrick Henry, yo, Derrick freaking Henry, and guys got the book on Lamar, man. And you don't, you don't think you don't think Vrabel, as good a coach as he is, is gonna have you know things up his sleeve. And even from the times that they that they played against them and they played against their defenses, because their defenses are still relatively the same. The only thing that's really changed is is Lamar running the football and trying to open up the pass. But they have no weapons now. They have no receivers, and that's that's why teams are getting a read on him and are able to stop him easier. And why you know he's he's had to call uh, the the defense stagnant. So, uh, you know. Man, Derrick Henry, yo, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but, yo, I'm going to take Titans, man. I'm going to take Titans. I'm going to take Titans, man. They got they got embarrassed by the Steelers, man, and they know that they have to keep pace with them because they're, they're about to go 10-0 straight up. Steelers are going to go 10-0 anyways. So they got to keep pace somehow because the road clearly, evidently, in the AFC is going to have to go through Pittsburgh and or Kansas City. Uh, on your way to the Super Bowl, so they got to keep pace with those guys and show them that they can they can hang with other you know competing teams. I'm saying Titans, yo. All right, next game, mine and your New York Football Jets at the Chadges. Two and seven Chadges. Um, man, I love Herbert, man. That's my guy, yo. That's my guy, you know. There's a whole bunch of other quarterbacks, it seems. A, a whole bunch of, excuse me, a whole bunch of, whole other bunch of young quarterbacks that I would rather have on the New York Football Jets 
than Sam Darnold, it's looking like at this point. Uh, should I? It's almost like second. Let me just say that. But man, you see guys like Herbert stepping up. Uh, my homeboy, obviously Lamar. Uh, you know, even even some of the other guys like Lutton or whatever, Luton, Luton, whatever his name is. You know. Um, oh, and I'm forgetting how two. Of course, how could I forget Kyler Murray? Like, come on, man. Any one of those guys would be mint on the Jets, but you know, instead we have Sam Darnold, who I don't know, man. He's not really like all, all that mobile like these other guys, and that's kind of how the, the game's sort of trending towards. He's just sort of the traditional pocket passer with a really, really, really shitty offensive line and no run game to speak of. So, uh, you know, with all that being said. I'm gonna take charges, yo. I mean, I know charges are two and seven, but man, they've been in so many freaking games, man. And I've called them to win so many times, and they got an effed over. Whether it's just like you know a, a, an unlucky bounce or a shitty ass referee call, it's just it's just tragic, man. So, but I, I take the charges to get their third win of the year in this one. Okay, next one: Dolphins at the Broncos. So. Miami's got to go from, uh, you know, the, the hot and sunny weather of Miami to uh, mile high where it could be uh, could be snowy and cold. But uh, honestly, man, the Dolphins have just been rolling like crazy. That that one play, you know, because see, see, this is the thing. A lot of guys play for right-handed throwing quarterbacks. And Tua, he's a sneaky little mofo with the, with the left-handed action. That's what made Cap really good too. Is it's a southpaw thrower. So when they when they when they did that design rollout play for Tua, where he like you know he 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 steps out of the pocket, rolls out, spins around, you know goes go, spins around backwards to uh, his his left his left, and then just whips the ball across the field to the other to the corner of the end zone on the right man holy oh, because. The guy was wide open, the tight end, just wide, like, oh, just, just sneaky good. He's sneaky good, and uh, you know he still got the athleticism. It's just you know t- training, training, off season, proper off season training, not rehabbing because you know there is a difference. He was basically just rehabbing from the hip surgery this past off season. Now he's getting his in game reps, but you know, no matter how well or good he does, I mean he's already he's already shown that he can play. Now the thing is, when he gets into his off-season training and has a chance to, you know, improve his fitness and range of motion and elasticity, yada yada, what have you, recovery, all that stuff, you know, then he'll have a chance to get even better and even more sneaky and get some of his athleticism back that you know he may he may have lost from surgery and muscular atrophy and you know just you know muscle memory loss, yada yada. But holy cow, man, you know. Tua, man, Ooh, if, the, if, if the Jets started him with a decent offensive line, oh, man, that would have been nice, too. But, uh, yeah, uh, point being, uh, take the Dolphins, uh, even even though they are on the road. I don't, I don't really see much from the Broncos. All right, next one. Uh, some people some people might see this as a marquee game, but I laugh at those people because this game features 2-7 and seven Dallas Cowboys at the 4-5 and five Minnesota Vikings. So you got your uh, Dallas Cowboys who poop emoji, uh, who you know basically have been sticking it up all year, uh, and the Vikings who you know they kind of been up and down. You know, uh, Justin Jefferson has been you know basically their their saving grace. Um, you know, and I hope he does well because I cop that you know what his rookie card. So yeah, I'm hoping he does continues to do very well, whether it's. Kirk Cousins throwing him the ball, hopefully for not much longer, because I don't know, he's kind of a, a waste of uh, almost ninety million dollars, um, or whoever you know the next great Minnesota quarterback is going to be that they draft or whatever. So yeah, man. Um, and I mean, honestly, like Viking Nation, whoever you know, however, what is it, a thousand, whatever, however many people they want to lend into the stadium, because it seems like the, the states have just they, they just don't care anymore. And it's like, all right. Screw it. Everybody's gonna get it anyway, so might as well let a few fans in the stands make 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 a few bucks. Try to keep the season and everything alive here. Uh, so 
with that said, Viking Nation is not going to stand for a home loss against the Cowboys. This is not going to happen. So take Minnesota at home. Like, the Cowboys are just dreadful. Uh, next one, Packers at the Colts. Um, a lot of people, some people have this as an upset because of the Colts' uh, defense. They might be able to, to do some damage. Um, I don't see it that way. Um, I think Aaron Rodgers, even though he's on the road, he's going to come out with a game plan. He's starting to get uh, targets to, to uh, Adams, I believe is, is the receiver's name. Um, you know, and, and other guys are getting involved and they're improving. So, I don't know, man. I think I would take the Packers on the road there. Uh, next one, Chiefs at the Raiders. So, this one, uh, the Raiders are at home. And uh, you all probably heard about uh, the victory lap incident when they beat uh, the Chiefs earlier this year. Chiefs are already pissed off about that. And uh, Pat Mahomes' only interception was thrown in that game and his only loss. So, I think they're going to exact some revenge. And I think the Chiefs are going to take it, man. They got that bulletin board material. And they're probably already pretty excited to play this game for sure on the road where it's it's a lot easier to focus for the guys. Take the Chiefs. Okay, and the last one, Monday Nighter, the Rams at the Bucks. Um, Tom Brady, take the Bucks, y'all. At home, I think they're going to do well. The Rams are not a great uh, a road team, and I think the Bucks are going to come out with a pretty good game plan to stop them. All right, guys, so there are your picks. Rewind it, roll it back. Good luck this weekend. Enjoy all the games. As always, before I go, I want to thank uh, my lovely wife, Kirsten, for making this show possible. It would not be possible without you, babe. So thank you for all that you do. Myself and our baby girl, Sophia. If you're watching this, baby girl, that he loves you so much. I hope you're watching this. I hope you guys continue to watch this out there. And stay tuned for my recap show. And I'll give you the weekly rundown. All that. Stay tuned for the next episode of the next show.